Hello, my name is Jeremy Christie. I'm a psychologist and I'm here to talk a bit about sleep. I've done a video already, <coughs> excuse me, which explains the science of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, please have a look. It's kind of fairly straightforward, but it, it, it's kind of basis of what I'm going to talk about now. So what I'm going to spend a bit of time uh, explaining are some of the helpful rules that we use, that we teach people when we're teaching people to manage sleep problems and manage their sleep. So you remember on the first video that, we're saying the really obvious thing, but the longer we're awake, the more likely it is we're going to sleep. And there's a sleep pressure, there's a pressure for sleep and a sleep debt. So we kind of got sleep in the bank when we're tired and that tiredness will trigger us into sleep. That will happen automatically, but a lot of people um, have problems associated with sleep because often they're trying too hard. There's a sort of effort and an intention to try and um, get sleep, which can often trip us up. But there is a natural pathway where actually there's a pressure of sleep building up and that debt will get cashed in with sleep later that evening. So this leads to the first rule of sleep, which is don't relieve the pressure. So what we're going to do is if you're going to, one of the things that resets the uh, sleep pressure is when we go to sleep in the evening and then it restarts. And now what, what happens if we sleep, if we sleep too long in the daytime, so more than about 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, then what happens is that the sleep pressure will reset. So this is the first rule of sleep is don't nap for more than 20 minutes in the day. Obviously, if you're doing something um, really dangerous um, or something that involves heavy machinery and those kind of things, uh, then please do get some sleep. You might want to sleep even a bit longer if you're going to be sleep deprived uh, the following day or you're building up to something. But generally, if you're going to nap, nap for less than 20 minutes. It's a really useful thing. You can get super refreshed and it can be very um, helpful. Uh, the Some people I know call it a nappuccino where you have a nap and you have a coffee and you go to sleep for 20 minutes and then you wake up and the coffee is kicking in. But as a broad principle for nap for less than 20 minutes. So what are the other rules of sleep that can be helpful? Well, the important thing uh, well, certainly one of the important things is to actually um, go to bed when you're tired because you'll remember from the first uh, video that I did that our body goes up and down more or less every hour and a half feeling slightly more awake and slightly more tired and slightly more awake and slightly more tired and you might notice it particularly after lunch when you might feel uh, really tired uh, but if we go to bed at the wrong time this can work against us so if we go to bed for example when we're starting to feel a bit more stimulated like here and actually our body is kind of getting more kind of um, aroused and kind of engaged then what happens is that we can be struggling against our body's natural sort of rise in the tide so what we do to avoid that what we do is we go to bed when we're tired now this is aiming to hit this part so when we're actually starting to get a bit tired then that's when we go to bed a lot of people can get worried about sleep and then they can start fixing a time to go to bed. I think I'll go to bed at whatever it is, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, whatever it is. Uh, but if you go to bed when you're not tired, you can run the risk of actually uh, having problems getting to sleep. And this can form the basis of uh, some insomnias and some behaviors. So one of the useful rules is don't have a fixed bedtime. Go to bed when tired. really useful. You might have a window of, uh, of a time where you roughly want to go to bed, but wait till you're tired to actually do that. The other part of this, the flip side of the coin, is actually we don't necessarily want a fixed wake, sorry, we do want a fixed wake time. We don't have a fixed bedtime, but we do want a fixed wake time. Now, if we're trying to crack, if I'm trying to crack someone's sleep problems, then one of the things that I'll be doing with them is having a fixed wake time. So have a fixed wake time, but not a fixed sleep time. And the other, the other trick with having fixed wait time is if you, if you really are starting to start to have sleep problems is that you keep that fixed wait time through the weekend as well. So these are some of the behaviours that we can do that are really, really helpful. So what happens when we're, when we're in bed? It happens to all of us, certainly often, very frequently. What happens when we're in bed and we're actually awake? Now, 
the psychologists amongst us tend to put numbers to things and what uh, one of the things like the psychologists do is they can score sleep so they use something um, known as sleep efficiency and if I'm in so this is if I'm in bed for six hours and I sleep for six hours I've got a sleep efficiency of 100% because I'm asleep all the time that I'm in bed if I'm in bed for eight hours but only sleep for six hours then that means I've got a sleep efficiency of 75% because 75% of the time I'm actually asleep and 25% of the time I'm awake. Now, why is that a problem? Because what we know from uh, sleep research is that when our sleep efficiency gets below about 85 or 90%, then that time awake in bed can give us time to then start thinking and worrying and remaining awake. Our brain can become engaged. So we want to keep if our sleep efficiency closer to 100%. Now to do that, what we do is that we get out of bed when we're actually tired. <laughs> what am I talking about? Get out of bed when we're awake. So if we're awake for more than about 15 minutes, then we get out of bed. So that's one of the rules of sleep. If you're awake for more than 15 minutes, get out of bed because that's really important because otherwise you're teaching yourself to be in bed and awake. So, if you're, so for 15 minutes, if you're awake for more than 15 minutes, Get out of bed. So what do you do in these? What do you do when you're awake um, at night or when you want to be sleeping at least? Well, you have to have a bit of a plan. So what we do is that I'll be encouraging people to, and there's good research to show this works, is I'll be encouraging people to get out of bed and go somewhere else. This is a bit quite difficult, obviously, if you're in the same room. Um, but if you can, go somewhere else. And if you are in the, are in the same room, go to, a, go to a desk or a chair somewhere away from the bed. What you do is you go to another place and you do something really boring. Perhaps not with hugely bright lights, although bright lights tend to make not too much difference, particularly if you get daylight in the day. But try not to do anything with bright lights and you go away and do something really quite boring. Someone I know used to polish the cutlery um, and, and they, um, other things can be like reading the terms and conditions to websites. Something really long and really tedious. Have them pre-printed, go somewhere quiet and then go and do that. That's part of the plan. If you're awake at night, go and do something boring and then go back to the other rule, which is going to bed when you're actually tired. So these are some of the helpful behaviours which actually can really, really help manage insomnia. We said, I said in the, in the earlier video about sleep hygiene. Sleep hygiene is a kind of list of do's and don'ts. It's not necessarily um, great in itself as a whole treatment for sleep problems, but it's a useful foundation. It's a good list of do's and don'ts. Some of the things can include um, not being too hot at four in the morning or not being too hot um, through your sleep time because actually you end up waking up. Um, uh, not having stimulants before you go to bed, so not having tea, coffee, chocolate uh, before in the afternoon if you're going to bed in the evening. So avoid those kind of stimulants. So there are some useful kind of behavioural things to do uh, with, with sleep hygiene. And the other thing um, I should probably mention, I'm going to mention this in a later video, which is about um, how we treat sleep problems, is that there are, two, there are two main things. Probably one of the things that I would suggest doing, and there's good research for this, is that trying not to work against our, our body's internal timer. So our body's internal timer will make us probably more likely to be evening people. We might be more awake in the evening and more tired in the morning, or we might be more awake in the morning and more tired in the evening. And as I said before, these are, these are known as owls and larks, and you've probably heard of that. Um, and I try, I'd be encouraging people trying not to work against their natural body clock. It can cause real problems, and I'll talk about more about that um, treatment later on. So there's some of the kind of rules that we have um, in terms of how to manage ourselves and manage our sleep. Um, if you have any further problems, uh, please chat to us. And the other, one of the other web websites that's very good, or one of the um, digital apps which is very, very good, is an app called Sleepio. I'm not involved in Sleepio, but Sleepio is um, the only national health service, the UK National Health Service, um, standalone digital app that's approved. It's got very, very good evidence for it. And what it does is runs through 
um, these kind of rules for sleeping um, and it'll tell you what it'll, it'll walk you through and tell you what works um, you, if you're in London you can uh, get it for free if you're in the London area uh, or you can actually pay for it it's probably cheaper than seeing a sleep specialist um, and it can be really really useful so go please have a look at Sleepio uh, we'll talk we'll think more about the rules of sleep um, in the next video which is about how we treat sleep problems and uh, yeah we'll talk more then thank you bye